Hi, I'm Jason Slapika, the Accessible Product Manager here at Aquatic, and today we're going to be showing you how to install our Freedom Line product. We're going to be showing you everything from roughing in to finishing. The first items you want to consider prior to installation are, does it need to be ADA or ANSI compliant, or is it just an accessible shower? This will affect your approach towards installation. While a non-code compliant accessible shower can simply be placed on the subfloor and the finished flooring brought up to it, ADA and ANSI require a half inch maximum threshold as seen in this sample here. That would require you to recess the unit, the height of the skirt minus the height of your finished flooring, or to bring your finished flooring up the height of the skirt. Once you've established your application, you want to check your alcove sizing. Alcove dimensions can be found on our tech data sheets or our submittal sheets, which are located at www.aquaticbath.com. Submittal sheets are a great tool because they're essentially an order sheet for your customer to make sure they're getting exactly what they want. Although all of our accessible product is pre-reinforced for ADA, ANSI, grab bar, and seat locations, if additional reinforcement is required, you can bond plywood or OSB using construction adhesive. We offer up two types of bottoms on our Freedom Line units, a standard base and a pre-leveled base. The standard base requires foundation material, while the pre-leveled base doesn't, unless the floor is not level. There are multiple foundation materials that you can use, either plaster of Paris, non-shrink grout in a powder form, or a pre-mixed non-shrink grout. These go in order from least expensive to most expensive. When laying the foundation material for a standard base unit, you'll want to place four softball sized mounds around the perimeter of the drain. When placing a pre-leveled base unit on a subfloor that is not level, you'll want to apply a thin layer of foundation material with a trowel. If the subfloor is level, this step is not required. We've gone ahead and placed the unit inside the alcove. A great tip is to use a furniture dolly to help you maneuver it. If you're using foundation material, as with our standard base units, you'll want to go ahead and step inside the unit to evenly disperse the material around the base. After leveling the unit, you'll want to make sure to put a piece of cardboard on the floor to protect it against any damage. After that's completed, you're ready to fasten the unit into the alcove. At this point, you're ready to pre-drill your pilot hole. This unit has a lower nailing flange. The lower nailing flange is meant to hold the threshold down. So you'll want to start in the center and move your way out every 8 inches. On units that don't have a lower nailing flange, we supply an angle bracket you'll want to place that in the center and pre-drill through it. Regardless of your lower flange configuration, your next move is to pre-drill the vertical nailing flange. You'll want to do that every 8 inches on center. For your horizontal nailing flanges, you'll want to drill at every stud. Now that you've gone ahead and pre-drilled holes, your next step is to fasten the shower into the alcove. You're going to want to go ahead and use coated or stainless steel screws to prevent corrosion. You're going to start in the center on the lower nailing flange or the angle bracket and move your way out following the pre-drilled holes. Now you're ready to install your flooring. If your shower does not need to be ADA or ANSI compliant, you can run your flooring directly up to the unit. If it needs to be ADA or ANSI compliant, you'll want to build your whole floor up the height of the skirt or ramp up to the skirt. If your unit is recessed into a pit, you can run the flooring directly up to it. Now that the shower is fastened into the alcove, you're going to want to go ahead and run your wall material up to it. Position it into place, fasten it, and then run a bead of caulk between the unit and the wall material. 
Some of our products feature an outward facing flange. The flange is installed the same way as a standard flange, but this configuration allows you to run your wall material flush with the face of the unit. Today we've shown you a basic installation. Hopefully this helps you out to get the job done quickly and correctly. If you have any further questions, we're always available to answer them.